pathophysiology. I, 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 I told you that pathophysiology of macular degeneration in the beginning. You know, you have the, the rusting, right? You have the light damage, right? And you have the eventual death of the cells when things happen. So from a basic science perspective, is there a story here that I can tell you that makes sense so that I can recommend you things right now that won't get tested for probably another 20 years? I don't think it's going to help many people here if it, it takes 20 years for us to find out all that information. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm sorry, man. No, well, 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 <laughs> I should, I should. Okay, make, make it 50 years. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, now, I told you that macular degeneration is rust. It's rusting back of the eye. Rusting debris of junk, right? We now have sort of a rust resolver. Not a really rust resolver, but more of a, a prevention, like a rust-oleum. And I'm going to talk about that rust-oleum. Now, I'm going to digress a little bit. I mean, uh, Dr. Kim said that this is like university. Well, I, I'm going to give you a basic science course. I, I used to teach, uh, I was uh, a professor of molecular biology at UPenn. So I would teach uh, medical students and PhD candidates. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a tidbit of my lecture, so please don't sleep, because that's what they all did. <laughs> but I'm going to explain to you what exactly rust is. What is oxidation? Actually, I, I always do this survey. I, I do this, I do this at, at, you know, when I was teaching at Penn. I would ask the audience, I mean, so can anybody volunteer what the heck oxidation means, what rust means? Anybody want to try? Okay, Corrosion. Corrosion is a, a good example. Oxidation of the iron molecule. Oxidation of the iron molecule, that's, that's pretty good. Yeah? Interaction between oxygen and any other substance causing oxidation. Okay. Crystallization. Crystallization. Uh, so, oxidate, oxygen interaction. Actually, um, uh, uh, some of them have some concepts to it, but uh, uh, they're not correct. I, I, I don't, I, I, I'm not grading you now, don't, don't get me wrong, okay? So, I'm glad I'm going to explain this. Now, we talked about all the antioxidants that, that are available in our nutrients, in our diet. There's a zinc, vitamin C, vitamin E. I'm going to talk about the parotenoids, the lutein, zeaxanthine, and then something called, very special called mesozeaxanthine, and also the fish oils, okay? But before I talk about them, I'm going to talk about oxidation. So most of us know rust as a piece of metal. So there's a bunch of nails over there, right? So just imagine that you look at a very, very powerful microscope, and it's very, very small, and you see the atom. The atom of iron, right? And the atom is like a planet. You have a central portion to it, and you have these things called electrons surrounding it, which are like moons. Right? Well, the problem with oxygen and metabolism is you produce something called free radicals. Uh, what, what, what's the best free radical we've talked about? You, you mentioned it, oxygen. Oxygen is one of them, but there are many, many, many other types of free radicals. And what they do is they steal the moons away from other things. Now, I showed that first picture of the Earth sort of blowing up a little bit. What do you think would happen if, if somebody, like an alien being, decided to steal our moon? What would happen to the Earth? It would crumble, right? So let's show that. You have a moon being stolen uh, by, you know, uh, uh, by, by this uh, free radical, uh, and that would be superoxide dismutase, oxygen, etc. And what happens? You rust. You get a crumbling of the actual atom, and it gets destabilized. And that's how you get a nail, which was nice and strong, or a piece of metal that was nice and strong, that becomes a crumbly piece of nothing. Right? Well, you know that happens to nails, but it happens to us also. And that's why I have gray hair. And why I have wrinkles that uh, my wife says I have to get Botox for. <laughs> okay? That's the reason. It's all because of this process happening at your cellular level. Now, what is antioxidation? All it is, is that you have another molecule 
which has a hell of a lot of electrons around it. So it can actually feed these free radicals and get rid of them so that they don't destroy the tissue or the metal or the engine and cause them to rust and crumble away. And that's all it does. Now, these are the antioxidants that have been studied. The A-reds formulation, vitamin C, vitamin E, and zinc oxide, okay? And you, there are many, many formulations of this. The one thing that I don't like is um, in this formulation that we studied, it has vitamin A in it. And I have a lot of evidence, and I'm going to show you these evidence, that vitamin A is a bad player. And we knew this probably 20 years ago. And you all ask, well, well, how did I know this, and, and why did we study it? I'll give you a story, and please don't repeat this, but, you know, um, uh, this, is, this is maybe an urban legend, I'm not quite sure. Uh, but uh, everybody knows, any, any scientist would tell you, back in the day, this is 1994, Joanna said it again, okay? She studied, epidemiologically, what nutrients would prevent or protect from macular degeneration. So she studied, she studied vitamin A, and she showed that in this study, which was a, another job, Journal of the American Medical Association, that's a big journal, okay, 1994, that vitamin A had no benefit. There was no evidence that it was beneficial, right? But lutein, zeaxanthin, which are carotenoids, which I'll explain to you in a bit, if you were in the top quintile of patients who ate foods high in lutein and zeaxanthine, carotenoids, it will protect you almost by uh, 56%. It, it's, uh, uh, you have to convert that. So like two times to two and a half times. That was very exciting data back then. And this was the basis for us studying the AREX-1 formulation. I know, I was there, my dad was there. <laughs> Okay, it was, it was in Boston where this was all being done. Now what's interesting is that why didn't we study lutein and zeaxanthine, and why did it take 15 years for us to start studying it? Well, it's our government, okay? Back then, you know, in 1994, um, lutein and zeaxanthine were very difficult to extract. They came from very expensive foodstuffs. So, they decided, you know, everybody knows that vitamin A is good for you, right? Didn't, didn't, didn't your mom tell you that? That, that eyes, carrots were good for your eyes? Bugs Bunny, that was the way, right? Bugs Bunny. Well, that's why they put it in there, to study it. Not because there was any evidence, but because it was an expedient. You know, vitamin C, vitamin E were very inexpensive. Zinc was really cheap, okay? And vitamin A was, was also cheap. That's why we studied it. But you know, that's how governments are. But that's also why we recommend vitamin A still, because um, you remember the government used to say that smoking was good for you? <laughs> How long did it take them to change their tune? A long time, right? Now, the problem, if vitamin A was harmless, I'd say, okay, go ahead and take it. But there's the recent evidence, and this is a, a paper in 2008 in ophthalmology, which is a very good journal, done by a great group called the Blue Mountain Eye Study that concludes, and I'm sorry it's very small, but that's, that's how journals are, that higher, higher beta carotene intake was associated with an increased risk of macular degeneration. They studied this in 3,000 patients and checked their intake. And they found that there was a two times increased risk, close to, almost close to smoking. If you were taking vitamin A, that you would progress to advanced macular degeneration. Now, most of you in the room know that I'm a drug developer. I have five patents, I've developed many drugs, okay? For macular degeneration and eye disease. We were studying another drug called fenretinine for the advanced dry macular degeneration. Now, the only thing that fenretinine really does and why we use it is because it depletes the vitamin A from your system. It makes you vitamin A Deficient. That's all it does. And we showed in a small trial, 78 patients, that by depleting your vitamin A, 
that he would slow the progression of the corrosion from advanced age-related macular degeneration by 50% in 18 months. You know how difficult that is to show? Uh, for those who don't know statistics, the smaller the number, the bigger the change, the more potent this concept is. Right? 78 patients. That's, that's piddling. 18 months. It's very short. And yet it showed definitively that that worked. So why the heck am I prescribing vitamin A to patients when I'm trying to take it, take it away from them? It's, it was kind of really funny because when we were doing the study, we were involved in the study, some of my patients were taking high doses of, of, of vitamin A and they were still on this drug. I'm going, what are you doing? <laughs> you know, doesn't make any sense. So for me, I don't need to, you know, uh, this can harm you. So I tell patients who have any form of advanced AMD, do not take high doses of, AM, uh, of vitamin A. Now, recommend daily allowance is great. Uh, you know, 3,000, uh, we call it international units, like 3,000 or 2,000. Um, but don't take the, the mega doses, like the 15 milligrams in the A-RED study. Okay? Also, don't juice your carrots. Um, I had a patient who came in, and he juices 100 carrots a day and consumes that. Now, what's interesting is that vitamin A will make you see better. It will make you see better. Okay? But you know what that is? It's like using rocket fuel in my uh, Honda Odyssey. Right? Sure. I'd love that. But give it a month. I think my engine would like, break down, wouldn't it? And that's exactly what happens. So think of that. You know, rocket fuel is good. It's like amphetamines. You know, uh, there's this Charlie Sheen guy, and uh, everybody knows Charlie Sheen, right? Well, he likes to be on speed. It ain't good for him. <laughs> but, you know, he thinks it's good for him because it makes him feel better, etc. But that's not good. Same thing with vitamin A. Moderation is fine. You know, I, I, I do take my coffee. <laughs> you know, that's a stimulant. Makes me feel good. But it's not too bad. You know, it's moderation. It's not amphetamines. Now, let's talk about carotenoids. And this is the key player. This was the key player back in 1994, and it's the big player now in 2011. What are carotenoids? Well, we know them, a lot of them, because in nature, there are 600 of them. 600. They provide the color that we see in nature. Apples, peppers, lots of carotenoids. Nice coloration. They're meant, actually, uh, to help plants with photosynthesis. They block wavelengths, and they absorb wavelengths. That's what their purpose is in nature. God is good, right? He knows. He, he's protection and also uh, nutri nutri nutrition. He provides that. In a typical diet, we eat 50 carotenoids because, well, I don't because I don't like vegetables. <laughs> so uh, I'll probably have much less than that. In your blood, you can isolate 22 carotenoids. In your serum, 15. Serum is that, the, the liquid portion of your blood. But in the macula, there are only three carotenoids. 